Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it is a great pleasure for me to take part in this discussion and deliver the opening remarks. First of all, let me express my deepest gratitude to the Assistant Minister for Foreign Affairs of Qatar, Lowell al Qatar, for ensuring her presence today and for the valuable assistance her country provided to Italy in carrying forward the evacuation of Italian citizens and Afghan refugees. Italy and Qatar share the strong commitment to steady, satisfactory and sustainable solution to the Afghan crisis. Our countries are both very active in promoting the rights and the empowerment of Afghan women and girls. I would like to thank WISE Italy for organizing this inspiring event and the Global Alliance of Regional Women Mediator Networks for its valuable cooperation. Let me also welcome the Deputy Special Representative for UNAMA, Met Nudsen, Ambassador Sandalli, and the representatives of Afghan women for sharing their first hand experience. Your presence and your powerful messages are very welcome and appreciated, especially in this crucial phase of the Afghan crisis. Italy is deeply concerned about the situation in the country and particularly about the deteriorating humanitarian conditions. The insecurity following last August's events adds to a very difficult situation characterized by raising poverty, displacement, and extreme natural events, such as the recent drought. We have immediately announced a very significant increase in our resources for Afghan, the Afghan crisis. 150 million euro will be devoted to mitigate the effects of the crisis for the Afghan population. The extraordinary leaders meeting that we hosted in, on October the 12th demonstrated that the G20 can provide significant added value in building concrete responses through an inclusive dialogue. The main outcome of the extraordinary meeting has been the unanimous recognition among all participants of the need to act in a swift, coherent, and consistent way vis-a-vis -vis the Afghan challenge. We highly value the contribution of the United Nations and their efforts to coordinate humanitarian assistance, which we fully support. In this respect, the need for safe and hindered humanitarian access was firmly stated. The second aspect that was highlighted during the leaders' meeting is the need to ensure provision of public services, especially education and healthcare, in cooperation with the international organizations. Another relevant point was the relief to be provided to migrants and refugees in neighboring countries in coordination with the UN agencies and the local authorities. The meeting also focused on security and fight against illegal trafficking. Afghanistan should not become again a safe haven for terrorism. This might destabilize not only Afghanistan, the whole region and beyond. G20 leaders also stressed the need to keep raising the attention on the human rights situation in Afghanistan, in particular of women and girls and calling for a greater international cooperation to support their urgent needs. The international community as a whole must mobilize to preserve the gains of the last 20 years in Afghanistan. Among them, ensuring access to education is a key priority. We were successful in raising awareness on these issues also during the ministerial event on the situation of women and girls in Afghanistan that Italy organized and Qatar co-sponsored on the margins of the last United Nations General Assembly high-level week. This is a daunting task as the developments of recent months are already jeopardizing 
hard-won gain. However, the international community must spare no efforts to safeguard women's rights, safety, and well-being. It is in everybody's best interest to unleash women's potential, enthusiasm, and pragmatism. The focus of today's event is of the utmost importance. This is the key issue we wanted to address, the role of women mediators and peace builders on current security challenges in Afghanistan. Indeed, excluding the gender perspective from peace and recovery processes weakens the foundations of sustainable peace and security. Excellencies, dear friends, I would like to conclude by recalling the three lines of action that Italy has been following to contribute to the protection of Afghan women and girls since the beginning of the crisis. First, mainstreaming the protection of their rights in all humanitarian interventions. Second, promoting an international mechanism to monitor the situation of human rights and promote accountability for violations and abuses in Afghanistan. Third, supporting women human rights defenders and activists, both in Afghanistan and outside the country. Indeed, we are convinced that the rights of Afghan women and girls are an integral part of a sustainable political solution. In this view, the international community should play a proactive role to urge authorities in Afghanistan to respect women's rights and to enable the full, equal, and meaningful participation of women in decision-making. Let's stand by Afghan women. Let's strive together for the future they deserve. I thank you again for being here today, and I thank all the friends that are following us also in the uh, online. I wish you a fruitful discussion. Uh, I stop here and I give the floor to Lowell Alcater, Assistant Foreign Minister of Qatar. Please, Lowell, the floor is, your, is yours. Thank you so much, uh, Marina. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, thank you, Your Excellency Marina Sereni, for, for your kind invitation and to the Women in International Security, the Global Alliance of Regional Women Mediator Networks, and the Italian Ministry of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation for organizing this important and timely discussion. These platforms are vital to keep the discussion ongoing, not just in regards to Afghanistan, but to empower women to play a larger role in peacemaking globally. Afghanistan is at a turning point now. And as the international community, we need to work together to make sure that we are supporting the Afghan people, especially Afghan women, who can play a tremendous role in influencing positive change. We have seen the tremendous role that women can play in conflict resolution and in empowering a society. This will be no different in Afghanistan, especially with a generation of highly educated, motivated, and courageous Afghan women. We have seen multiple and many and various stories. And today I wanted to share with you two stories of two incredible Afghan women that I had the honor of getting closer to in the past few months and to witness their impact on Afghanistan. The first one would be Roya Mahboub the Digital Citizen Fund Foundation, or founder, a foundation dedicated to helping girls gain access to education and developing their technological skills. Her foundation recently made the news when Qatar helped evacuate the now famous robotic girls. Thousands of other girls received their education through Roya's foundation. And what I find most inspiring is that Roya is dedicated to continue the work of her foundation in Afghanistan and is working now on an exhibition that highlights the accomplishments of all of these girls and what girls in general can achieve when empowered and educated. The second would be 
dear sister Fatma Gilani, a dear friend and a fellow speaker at this very event. She was one of the female negotiators during the intra-Afghan Afghan dialogue in Doha. Sayyida Fatma was instrumental during those negotiations and is respected by all factions in Afghanistan. At the time when everyone started to leave Afghanistan after the fall of Kabul, Sayyida Fatma decided to go back to Afghanistan. To go back to Kabul and make a statement, she wanted to clearly state that change can happen from within. And what women can still play and do in Afghanistan, they can indeed play an important role in this change. Sayyida Fatma has a long history of advocating women's rights. She was at the heart of the political scene during the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan, serving as the spokesperson of the National Islamic Front Party. The admirable role Sayyida Fatma played in Afghanistan is not a surprise, by the way, to anyone who's familiar with Afghanistan's history. Afghanistan had women participating in the public life and in leadership positions 70 years ago, ladies and gentlemen, 70 years ago. When many in the West and in the East alike were still questioning the public role of women. These are stories of two incredible Afghan women, but there are millions more of similar stories. Women who will be at the forefront of change in Afghanistan. With these bright minds, and with the resilience that we have continuously seen demonstrated by Afghan women, I continue to be optimistic that there is still hope in Afghanistan. The ultimate answer, ladies and gentlemen, is definitely not depleting Afghanistan of its most talented women and men. I assure you that Afghan women do not need rescuing. They are fully capable of fighting for their rights. Instead, we in the international community have a clear responsibility now when working together to advocate for positive change and inclusive policies in Afghanistan. This can happen through diplomacy and dialogue and through helping to stabilize Afghanistan through aid and developmental projects and sustaining the middle class. Sustaining the middle class is something I learned from Sister Fatma Gilani. Ladies and gentlemen, your excellencies, thank you so much for listening. Thank you, dear Serena, for inviting me to, uh, uh, sorry, dear uh, uh, Marina Serini for inviting me to today's event. Uh, and I wish you a very fruitful uh, discussion. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lol. Thank you very much for your speech, your participation, and also for all you are doing with us uh, for helping Afghan women and Afghan population in general. Now I give the floor to Irene Fellin, that is uh, the representative of uh, Wise Italy, and she will chair the, this part of the, the seminar. Please, Irene, the floor is yours. Thank you, Deputy Minister, and thank you very much, uh, Her Excellency uh, uh, Al Qatar, for joining us. It's uh, very uh, important and uh, very inspiring for all of us to see uh, how this uh, collaboration among uh, works at different level, among institutions, high level, among, as you said, middle class, on the ground with our sisters. We organize this event today to really uh, provide a platform for discussion and uh, to listen. So I will not uh, talk myself. I'm here only to guide the conversation and to learn from uh, our uh, distinguished guests. Uh, only uh, the final purpose of this is really to try to understand all together and in collaboration with uh, our members from the Global Alliance of Regional Women Mediators uh, Network, how we can really uh, build support and uh, provide uh, tools for um, helping uh, and building this positive change. 
it was just noted that women uh, don't, do not need to be rescued in that sense because they have the energy, they have the willingness, they have the, their, their own power. They know exactly what they want and what they need. In the past decades, they have the uh, capacity to show and to change their life. And uh, what we want is that uh, to uh, support them and provide them with the possibility to continue living the life they chose for them, uh, themselves. And for doing that, I think it was important for us to invite different stakeholders because I think that we need a joint synergy with the UN, with our, uh, the embassies and at the diplomatic level and with our women. I've been the coordinator of the Mediterranean Women Mediators Network in the past uh, five years since its launch. And I had the pleasure to work on the Secretariat of the Global Alliance in the past, uh, since it was launched two years ago. I think that now we all have a um, concrete opportunity to show how we can make a difference, how these tools, the tools of the network are relevant as a, a tools of soft diplomacy. So it's not only a group of women and expert women coming together to discuss, but we can really make a, a difference. And to do that, we also need uh, to have the stakeholders on board and the diplomacy and, uh, and the political will on our side. Uh, to do that, I would like to start the conversation to give the floor to our Ambassador Vittorio Sandali, our Ambassador uh, of Italy uh, in uh, Afghanistan, that is, who is now uh, based in Doha, and to hear from him the situation. I mean, he uh, experienced this in the days of the evacuation and how things are moving forward now from his perspective. Thank you, Ambassador, for being with us. Uh, the floor is yours. You have six minutes. Thank you, Excellencies Deputy Minister Sereni, Excellencies Assistant Minister uh, Alcater, uh, Honorable Members of the Italian Parliament uh, that are, uh, I think, uh, connected to this uh, conference and seminar, dear colleagues. Well, I'm very honored and very pleased to, to be part of, of, of the panel, of the discussion, and would like to thank Vice Italy's President, Mrs. Fellin, for her invitation today uh, for taking the initiatives for the panels. But it is indeed a very timely moment to ask ourselves uh, how to support women's contribution to a durable peace and an inclusive, an inclusive development in, uh, in Afghanistan. Well, from my perspective and being in Doha now where uh, we, we, and we thank the, the hospitality from the Qatar government uh, in Doha, we relocated uh, temporarily our, uh, our embassy uh, to Afghanistan. I think that now at the, this stage, our main task is that we must not lose momentum. As uh, the, the, uh, the Deputy Minister uh, Sereni already emphasized, the international community reacted promptly to the appeal for assistance coming from the UN Secretary General on the third, uh, on the beginning of September, while Italy on the 12th of October, just a month later, led the G20 leaders extraordinary meeting on Afghanistan. And uh, uh, on this meeting, on this uh, uh, very specific and uh, extraordinary meeting focused on Afghanistan, let me quote the chair, from the chair summary, the following passage. The G20 will continue to support the Afghan women and girls both in their immediate needs and to enable them to contribute to a durable peace and an inclusive development to the benefit of all Afghans. I think that uh, this is uh, the, in the context of a clear understanding of the values at stake where we can shape a possible role and contribution of women mediator networks on the Afghan scenario, in line with the objectives of the UN Security Council Resolution 1325, and taking into account the experience and the recommendations of the prominent female activists attending today's meeting. I think we should focus our efforts on three main directions at this stage. First, we should emphasize the added value offered by the females component of the negotiating team to the intra-Afghan talks from September to 2020 to the beginning of 2021, just a few days before the Taliban takeover. 
And uh, we have to emphasize in particular that the process of trust and pragmatic progress the female leadership was able to promote on the occasion of the intra afghan talks. Second, as international community and like-minded networks, we need to step up our pressure on the de facto authorities to ensure education for girls, as well as women inclusivity in government institutions and administrative bodies. And you have to insist uh, on the experience of the majority of Muslim, Muslim countries. Just to mention uh, uh, a couple of countries I have served in, in Indonesia for more than four years and Qatar now, Indonesia and Qatar are a clear example of this practice of inclusivity of women in any aspect of the pol political and social and economic life in, the, in their country. Just to mention, in fact, two, just two of the countries who play, are still playing a, a significant role in, on the Afghan, in the Afghan issue. Third, the women's role in countering the current extremely serious economic and humanitarian crisis and in relaunching the basic development process should be clearly voiced as well as the necessity to include women in the decision-making process on recovery initiatives. One of the main challenges that Afghanistan is facing now is in fact the humanitarian catastrophic crisis. And the women's role should be voiced and emphasized on, uh, on, this, uh, on all the efforts to counter the, the the extremely, extremely serious situation. The last 20 years contributed to support at least two generations of Afghan women in taking conscience of their rights and their direct contribution to the Afghan civic and economic growth. Our duty now is to keep the pressure high. It is my understanding that the challenge is clear to the Taliban too. During the first international public appearance in Doha, the de facto Minister of Foreign Affairs, just a few days ago, in mid, it was exactly the 12th of, uh, of October, wanted to show openness on the presence of women in Afghan society. Probably even among some of the government circles in Kabul, nowadays there is still, uh, in a certain way, not clear, still undefined, understanding that Afghanistan cannot be deprived of a substantial women role within the society. But we have to double our, our pressure. And we have to be very, really vigilant. And this is the bridge where our initiatives and effort may lie. Now we have, a, as you know, and you use every day an instrument for accountability to this end, that is social media. Even Taliban shifted their attitude to the media in general, and currently have several official social media accounts. At least this is an additional field of our public engagement. We have to keep a level high, a high level of attention, high level of pressure at any, at any, in, in any, in any sector of our activity. So not only at the institutional level, but mainly at the social level, the, the, at, the, at the think tank level, that the network that is represented now is really a, a absolutely valuable instrument. So, and in our effort, uh, uh, the, the, we can use the, the, all our uh, instrument to value uh, the openness and inclusivity value that you share, relying in this uh, on the unquestionable determination of Afghan women. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ambassador, uh, for your insights and also to uh, underline also the, the different aspects and the impact that uh, the crisis is having also on the country as, a, as such and the valuable contribution uh, of women also on the economic aspect. Uh, it's really a broad issue that, and it's important that we really look at the picture uh, on a, uh, in a inclusive and holistic way. As part of our uh, collaboration this year, uh, the role and the relationship with the UN have been of vital uh, importance. 
of course, at political level, but also for us in our internal consultation, the support that was given also in the establishment of the Global Alliance. Therefore, I'm very uh, glad to have the opportunity to um, I give the floor to Her Excellency Mette Knudsen, Deputy Special Representative for Afghanistan at the uh, mission um, at UNAMA. And uh, she's also here, as she, uh, as, and she's also a member of the Nordic Women Mediators uh, Network, just to show how many uh, competent and important women are part of this network uh, um, of women in mediation. And uh, I would like to give you the floor, Mette. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Chair and um, uh, Excellencies, uh, Ministers, uh, Members of Parliament, my Afghan friends and uh, also mediator colleagues. Uh, it is a real pleasure to uh, be allowed to be part of this important discussion today. Let me uh, spend a little bit of time in the beginning also to talk about the overall situation in Afghanistan, which I think is best characterized by a, a very high degree of uncertainty and unpredictability about the future, especially for women and girls. Afghanistan faces a crisis of unprecedented magnitude, which undermines the development gains. Afghanistan is now one of the largest food crises in the world and will soon be the, the largest in the world. More than half its population, a record 23 million people, will face acute food insecurity from November, while the IMF forecasts a GDP contraction of 30%. So this dire economic situation in the country and the need for families to survive is, is really creating additional challenges for the women of Afghanistan. It gives rise also to protection concerns for women and children in relation to trafficking and other forms of exploitation and abuse, such as the sale of children, which we have already documented a few instances of, and child marriage. As the UN, we have thousands of colleagues, mostly Afghans, on the ground around the country to support the Afghan people. But humanitarian assistance alone is not enough. And uh, I think um, uh, my colleague, the uh, Italian ambassador, has already mentioned uh, the economic, uh, overall economic situation. We must do everything we can to prevent the economic collapse of the country. The world must act and inject liquidity into the Afghan economy and prevent a total economic and social breakdown. But I should stress that Afghanistan's economic crisis will not be resolved without the full contribution of professional staff, including women in all professions and in the civil service. As some women recently asked me, please advocate with the Taliban to get competent staff to support addressing the current challenges. <clears throat> but women's participation in civic and public life is, is hardly seen. There are no women in the Taliban cabinet, there are no women in senior echelons of the civil service, and most female civil servants are no longer at work. NGOs that work on women's rights issues have been a target for Taliban searches. <clears throat> the promises that the Taliban made to Afghan women and girls are being broken. However, having said this, and uh, without uh, wanting to, to do any type of whitewashing, I do want to, to uh, have us to have a good view of the realities on the, ground, on the ground. We have seen that in some areas and some sectors, mainly health and education, women are incrementally able to work. Uh, and I was very thrilled to meet very courageous women anchors and reporters during, during my visit yesterday to the media house uh, Tolo News. But it should be stressed that women at work should be the rule, not the exception. In terms of education, the Taliban have not made any official announcement about education of girls in grades 7 to 12. And they continue to indicate in all our conversations with them that mechanisms are still being set up to allow girls to return to school under so-called appropriate conditions, which are then not specified. But again, we must stress that we have received some reports that girls in grade seven and 12 have been allowed to return to school in a handful of provinces. 
But even though schools are open, girls' attendance remains low. The absence of many teachers, particularly female teachers, has also been a challenge. Most teachers have not received their salaries for months. But I must stress here that it doesn't make much sense to, uh, to advocate for girls' participation in school if we end up having an education system that is completely broken down. So again, I have to stress there is a need for the international community to address the overall uh, crisis in Afghanistan and not the most narrow, only the most narrow <coughs> humanitarian uh, needs. Incidents of violence against women and girls and harmful practices uh, that I mentioned, <coughs> such as child and forced marriages, are continuing. And the problem here we see is that survivors and their families have no recourse to formal justice. Many women I have spoken to express their feeling of complete insecurity as there is no justice system to protect their rights. As the UN, we are trying to speak to Afghan women from the different provinces in Afghanistan. We are talking to them here in Kabul. We are also talking to the, the women who have left for the diaspora. And we try and listen to their challenges and hear their suggestions on the way forward. And I must say that it's extremely inspiring uh, to meet with these women who are still fighting on despite this uh, terrible situation. With our presence throughout the country, we also continue to monitor the human rights, including women's rights situation. Uh, without, of course, jeopardizing the safety and security of our staff. And the UN leadership in Afghanistan, including the SRSG, Deborah Alliance, and myself, we continue to raise the issue of women's rights with the Taliban, whom we have regular conversations with. Uh, and we stress to them that all girls must be able to go to school, women must come back to work, and uh, must be able to raise their issues and concerns with the international community and in general. And we have also uh, now encouraged all incoming visits, uh, visitors from the international community to include women as part of their delegations. If the Taliban wants to engage with the world, they have to engage with women. As they do with the UNAMA leadership, the meeting we had the other day with the acting minister of foreign affairs, we were three people in the delegation uh, and uh, three out of the four, we were four in the delegation, three out of four were, were women. <clears throat> what is it then that the international community can do and what can this network do? The UN and the international community should continue to advocate and engage in dialogue with the de facto authorities on Afghanistan's legal obligations and responsibilities related to international agreed commitments, particularly in relation to human rights and women. And the Taliban should be held accountable also to the commitments they have made themselves. The international community and particularly Islamic countries should promote interpretation of Sharia in line with those international principles, norms and standards. As, and we would like to see more exchanges with other Islamic countries and organizations that respect these rights. And I was very, very pleased to hear the intervention of uh, the, the Deputy Minister of Qatar uh, in this regard. As for the UN, uh, we are in the process of establishing an Afghan Women Advisory Group uh, to work closely with our humanitarian country team to ensure that rights of women and girls remain comprehensively integrated in humanitarian assistance. The mediators network, and in particular, women mediators from other Islamic countries and from this region could advocate for integrating women in the justice sector as just judges, prosecutors, and lawyers, which would in turn strengthen women's rights and the effective redress of their violations. I hope to meet the acting minister of justice and the Chief Justice very soon to also promote these uh, issues. And we should continue to invite and speak with a diversity of Afghan women, both those in Afghanistan from different provinces and in the diaspora. And we are also looking at ways of facilitating interactions between uh, the women networks, the women activists, and the de facto authorities. And we are already doing that in some of the processes, uh, provinces. 
We should also, and I want to stress that uh, very much, we should use all possibilities to provide financial support to sustain the capacity of women activists, especially those inside Afghanistan, so that they can flourish again when the situation allows. They are the real heroes and they are fighting uh, not only for um, these general principles, at the moment they are also fighting for the survival of themselves and their families. And we do need to see flexible, broad-based support to all these women networks to allow them to stay in place, to continue to, to do their important work and to be ready also to scale up when the situation allows. And then I would also add as the final point, uh, one of the most uh, concrete things that the, the Global Alliance uh, of Women Mediators could do is to use its stre the strength of the network to encourage women in influential positions in neighboring countries to advocate for the rights of Afghan women with their own governments. And uh, th this includes, for example, neighboring countries such as Pakistan and Iran. Progression in pro progress in these countries on women's issues could be impacted by a negative trend of women's rights in Afghanistan. So women in, in neighboring countries have um, a direct interest also um, in support of their own fight to show strong solidarity with their Afghan sisters. And I think it would be incredibly useful to reestablish some of the networks that were there before between, for example, parliamentarians in the neighboring countries women's networks, women's active, um, um, women's uh, NGOs uh, in support of, uh, of Afghan women. And I hope that um, the, the Women Mediator Network could also be instrumental in assisting uh, with that. With the, these sort of more specific um, uh, suggestions, uh, thank you again for allowing me to uh, be part of this debate. And, and I look forward to listen to the rest of the speakers. Thank you very much. We thank you very much for uh, providing us with very, this very uh, useful overview about the crisis and to stress the importance to really not address only specific issues if we want to uh, really support uh, uh, this uh, durable solution and peace for, for women, but really to have a, uh, an overview on, uh, on the context. And also thank you for the um, practical uh, um, recommendation for the Global Alliance will be then taken and discussed uh, in the following panel. Uh, I would like now to um, just say one word on behalf of uh, Honorable Lia Quartapelle. She was uh, supposed to, to join us, but unfortunately due to a, an another um, conflicting institutional commitment, she cannot be with us, but she will follow our conversation and in the continuation of our work in the months. Uh, uh, ahead as she has been uh, doing uh, since uh, the eruption of the crisis uh, in, uh, in August. I would like now to pass the floor, give the floor to our uh, Afghan uh, guests. Some of them are present with us here in the room. Some others are connected from different parts of the world. They have different backgrounds, different experiences, so that they will be able to really uh, enrich this conversation and help us to really better understand the current needs and the the support that we can do, uh, we can give them and the country in the coming months. Um, I would like to give the floor first to uh, Mrs. Fatma Gayani. She's an Afghan peace negotiator, you, we all know her. And thank you, Mrs. Gayani, for being with us. Uh, you have also six minutes and the floor is yours. Thank you. Um, thank you very much. Uh, um, I'm glad that I re recovered my voice. It's only four days that I have voice. And I'm using it in a very valid uh, place. Uh, your both excellencies, uh, it is my pleasure uh, to be with you and to my sisters uh, from Afghanistan and uh, beyond. Um, and I thank uh, my dear, dear sister, Lulua al Khater, Her Excellency, um, to appreciate what I see as my duty to do. And uh, she sees it um, special. I'm very lucky. Uh, to have this. Um, I agree uh, with all the things which were said um, now, um, especially one thing the Italian ambassador to Afghanistan said, which is extremely important that we must not um, lose the momentum. The momentum started a year ago in, um, uh, in Doha. Uh, unfortunately, uh, it 
that uh, didn't reach the success we wanted. Uh, and we all know the reason now. And, um, but uh, it is not redundant. And I think it is even more valid now uh, that we will continue this conversation uh, inside Afghanistan. Um, it is very important that uh, the pressure and demands from international community, from neighbors, Muslim countries, donor countries, uh, from everyone uh, should come um, regarding uh, women and women's role in Afghanistan. But I strongly believe that if we want something to be fundamentally changed and will sustain and continue are the changes that women in Afghanistan, they will achieve it themselves. Uh, yes, um, uh, women's issue had its enormous ups and downs. When I was growing up in Afghanistan, for me, the, the, um, uh, it was during uh, His Majesty King Zahir Shah, and everything was coming naturally. There wasn't hardly any outside um, hand in changes for women. It was a home uh, grown uh, changes. And for me as an eight year old um, girl, it was like a dream to see um, in black and white, um, uh, I mean, in the cinemas, we didn't have television at that time, that women ministers, women parliamentarians, and women diplomats. And for me, it was uh, a glamorous and very important. And uh, for me at that time, it was, if you are educated, you could be whatever, whoever you want. But we saw what happened uh, to women in Afghanistan. The 70 years of changing for women uh, was washed away. That's why when people talk about the last 20 years that changes came to women, I was not born 20 years ago. I was born um, 67 years ago. And I grew up in those years. I matured in those years. I was educated in those years. I was, an ex I was expecting my daughter when I left Afghanistan. So I, and among hundreds of thousands of other women, uh, we were the products of Afghanistan. Today, another uh, shock came to the uh, women in Afghanistan. Uncertainty is the most difficult uh, thing for me. Uh, as a woman, as a Muslim woman, as a practicing Muslim, Muslim woman. Because when I see that in the name of my religion, things are happening which has absolutely nothing to do uh, with the religion. And I tried very hard during the constitution 18 years ago and today that in Afghanistan, one of the most problematic thing is that religion and tradition, very old, redundant bad traditions have mixed and it is at the time that it has to be removed. When people talk about Sharia, women's uh, rules, uh, women's rules and laws and behavior in Sharia, um, am I losing? No, Hello? it's fine. We can okay, you. okay. Um, uh, okay. If, if we wanted to have women um, as ministers, I strongly believe women could be ministers, could be president, could be anything, prime minister. But suppose there are a group of people, they say women in Sharia. Fine in Sharia. Just talking about Sharia is not enough. Now it is more than two months that Taliban have come to power. Have they passed a decree that it is forbidden for women not to take inheritance. More than 95% of women in Afghanistan, they don't take their inheritance because it's shame. Have they gave a decree in this? Have they gave a decree in the Sharia law that women is a dowry, which is paid, which is a security, like anywhere in the world for women is forbidden to be taken by uh, father or the brothers of the uh, of the bride is is that had become a decree? I expect it. Okay, let's have Sharia then. 
let's have this uh, decree. Do we have a decree that women cannot be forced to be married to people that they don't even know and haven't met and they don't know or want? This should be a, a decree because it is in Sharia. So there are lots of things. This is the problem. The problem is that we all talk, we don't open that what is inside that talk. In Doha, I'll be short, I don't, <laughs> there's so many things to talk about. In Doha, I learned, unfortunately, we didn't succeed and we could have, we could have succeed. Lingering, lingering for something which we knew is not happening, but never mind. But we women, we four women, we learned something and we taught a lot. We learned how to talk with people like Taliban that they have totally different idea about women, women's work, women's education and presence of women in such an important political process. And, and we learned how to deal and talk with people who are not thinking exactly like us. That's why we have to use this inside Afghanistan. Women's uh, presence and women's um, place and impact today will be again extremely important inside Afghanistan when the aid will have to come because people are in big difficulties. Women helping their society has a tradition in Afghanistan. Women's role in the civil society and the distribution of aid uh, has an important place and no one can take it. Yes, Taliban have come back, but Afghanistan is not the same Afghanistan that they came to few, uh, many uh, 25 or 30 years ago. This Afghanistan is different. Women in Afghanistan is, are different. These women will not allow uh, to be pushed away. I am repeating again, and I'm going to stop here, that the pressure from outside has to continue, especially from the Muslim world, from everybody, from donors. But no one could change permanently inside Afghanistan anything unless we, the women of Afghanistan, we take hand by hand together and start a conversation. The conversation which started in Doha, it is not finished. It has to continue and we have to prevail. Thank you. Thank you very much for sharing your experience with us and for this very important last uh, words. We will make treasure of this and especially through your sisters will, uh, will do and we will be here for supporting you uh, as much as we can. I saw now that uh, Mrs. Azila Wardak uh, joined us, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I would like to give her the floor. She's a former diplomat of Afghanistan. Mrs. Wardak, are you with us? Thank you so much and uh, good afternoon to everybody and then good morning to those that they are uh, in the US. Uh, I just would like to thank the uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs of Egypt to provide us this opportunity for us to speak today. At the same time, uh, I would like also to thank the uh, government of Italy for supporting and helping of Afghans, especially Afghan women, uh, for their long-term support. Especially during the evacuation, they, they did a lot for, uh, for Afghans and then they evacuated a big number of people, especially those that they were at risk. But still, there are many people uh, in Afghanistan women's police, women's judges, women's lawyers, women's member of parliaments, that they really need to be evacuated. Afghan women, unfortunately, once again, became the target of extremism. After the Kabul collapsed, we suffered a lot. We were living with uncertainty. We are living with uncertainty, with an unknown future. Millions of Afghan, including women, children, either left their uh, country or become IDPs. People in the globe and member of UN celebrating the week of peace and security, women peace and security, while millions of Afghans women are sitting at home and can't work, girls can't go to schools, millions are facing hungers. 
According to Food and Agriculture Organization, FAO, more than 22 millions of Afghan people facing food insecurity and hunger. Afghan, once again, especially women, we deprived from our basic needs and rights. Media is not uh, covering anything. And media is very much controlled in Afghanistan. There are many cases of violence and atrocity of this. There is no, these violence against women and girls are continuing in the provinces, unfortunately. But no one is reporting. I have called on international community, especially words of women, world women's leaders, to stand with us, to stand with Afghan sisters. Your message of solidarity gave us so much energy and moral. I would like to call on United Nations and its member states to not forget once again Afghan people, especially Afghan women and children. I also would like to call upon on my sisters who are part of this um, network, this mediators network, to be with us and to work on a proper strategy to work with Afghan women and to, <coughs> to announce their solidarity by direct engaging with us. I know many of you have great experience working with other um, women in the conflict areas. We need to work together to find the priorities and needs of Afghan women and children. Women Mediators Network can play a great role to pressurize Taliban government to allow girls to go to schools and then to allow women to work and to allow women to be part of the project designed for humanitarian assistance. Women, Afghan women shouldn't be only the beneficiaries of such project but the leaders and implementers of the big project. Protection of women during and after the conflict is part of the UN 1325 resolution. And I urge once again, international community and its alliance in UN to put pressure and then to <coughs> put practical step to ensure women's, women's are protected. Thank you. Thank you very much for your words and also to join us uh, hearing that you are not feeling well. We really appreciate this uh, um, and we wish you a, a, a prompt recovery. Thank um, you. And thank you for really your insights. We are um, really um, taking note of them and uh, they will make the, the, the basis and you know for our work in the coming months. Uh, I would like now to give to invite our uh, colleagues and friends, Karamama Kaka, to join uh, uh, to us and to speak. Uh, Karamama is a senior strategic advisor and uh, she works as a coordinator of the women mediators across the Commonwealth. Please, Karamama, the floor is yours. You have also six minutes. Thank you so much, Irene. Um, I would actually like to start with congratulating everyone the week of the celebration of Security Council Resolution 1325. Celebrating this occasion is indeed a source of both reflection and its aspiration. Um, I know it's hard to put ourselves in the shoes of Afghan people, particularly Afghan women, but let's for a brief moment, imagine you're one of them, an Afghan man who is not able to feed his family, an Afghan child who goes to bed hungry, an Afghan elderly who does not have access to basic medical care, an Afghan girl and woman who are deprived of their basic rights. And then try linking your state to the resolution 1325. I think we will somehow get lost in the process. I would ask myself that what does it even mean for Afghan women and the country as a whole? Afghanistan has been a test case for the international community for the past 20 years with at least one prominent slogan, that of liberating and empowering women in Afghanistan. It has been a test case for the regional powers, and more importantly, a test case and very relevant to what we, we are discussing today for the Women, Peace and Security Agenda, an agenda that we have badly failed in and that at so many levels. We regrettably lost all opportunities that are, were available to us for the past 20 years to reach to a peaceful settlement to ensure representation of all Afghans, including women. Our achievements were so fragile that we managed to lose them in the matter of days and weeks, just because we failed to mediate between the actors, between the different needs and the demands and the interests. 
it is time for an honest reflection, holistic rethinking, and relevant but very urgent actions. Had Afghans, including women, been the center of the peace agenda? Had women and other excluded groups of the Afghan society been included, included in the peace process meaningfully? Had the international stakeholders listened to women? Had they provided women with resources, access, and political support? I believe things would have been much different today. Women peace builders and mediators, including Afghan women peace builders who are ready to support and act and have the wisdom and the experience and the political maturity, maturity, had they been given the opportunity to play a meaningful role, the situation would have been entirely different today. We are failed by the so-called international community. We are failed by the international laws and frameworks. We are failed by our leaders. And I'm sorry for being an angry Afghan voice today. <laughs> um, and the agony continues as the lives of women in Afghanistan, which are being still being objectified as we speak, and which continue to be the bargaining tool for all parties and actors. Nevertheless, the past 20 years in particular has created an Afghan woman and a new Afghan society as a whole. What we have not lost is the awareness, the strategic thinking, being innovative, the willingness to persevere, the willingness to continue to rebuild our lives and our country. It is a good opportunity to remind ourselves and to showcase that we are there and that we are ready to do it even more to help the Afghan people in their struggle against further sufferings. However, and towards alone are not enough. And we will continue to fail and bring the country to even a worse situation if we don't learn now, if we don't in its letter in spirit, put the Afghan people and women ahead of everything else, right at the center and everything else evolving and getting itself fixed around them. And let's for once do this collectively. What we have been going through is really long suffering for any nation to experience a full scale war and destruction for that long is very, very hard. For once, everyone has to make alliance with those who would truly work in the interest of the Afghan people. Give the chance to women for once to work with you as your primary partners, advisors, and allies. Help them lead us all through the way forward. What is happening in Afghanistan today is you're all aware and, and many of the friends today actually talked about those challenges in the country, which include children dying from hunger in the center of the capital city. A humanitarian catastrophe is surely looming and the outcome will certainly be disastrous, disastrous and out of control if you do not act fast. Humanitarian needs, aid needs to go to the people as quickly as possible while ensuring the gen it is gender, gender sensitive, making sure women have the access to this and are, and are part of the decision-making and are part of the process of implementation and distribution of the aid. And, and more than that, be part of the long-term economic development activities. People need food, girls need to go back to the schools and universities. Women need to return to work to continue playing a vital role in building the society. Continuity of a high level of uncertainty that we are currently witnessing on the ground would mean the continuation of trauma for Afghan people. The country will face a further brain drain if personal security and economic issues are not urgently addressed. We collectively need to rethink the WPS agenda and assess what it meant and what it means in the context of Afghanistan. We need collective action to call on global leaders and to not let them close their eyes on Afghanistan. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Karamama, for being so direct and to really also I mean, go to the point and uh, to mention the agenda, indeed, we are here today this, in these days because we are uh, celebrating the, the anniversary. And uh, you are right. I mean, we, we as an international community and uh, everybody, I think we, we failed. I mean, every anniversary we repeat the same uh, words, but uh, uh, there, 
I we all had this conversation before thinking how difficult it is uh, to talk about national action plans and policies uh, with the population and with women and girls when there is uh, an open conflict. This is really two different levels. And I think uh, we really have the opportunity to, to make a difference so here. We have to uh, succeed now um, with, uh, with, the, with Afghanistan and uh, we think the agenda. It's a great opportunity and we hope that with the network we will be part of this uh, change in the, in the coming months. I would like now to uh, invite our guests who are here uh, now here physically with me in Rome uh, to share their experience. I uh, would like to give the floor to Zara Ahmadi. Um, she um, is, was evacuated in, uh, from uh, Kabul in, uh, in August. She's a, a female entrepreneur and uh, a peace activist coming from, uh, as I said, from Afghanistan. She was uh, living in Afghanistan even after the family left a few years ago. And uh, her brother is here with us today, Hamed. He's uh, also an entrepreneur living in Venice, but they will share the stories maybe. Just a technical information, uh, Zara will speak in Farsi and then uh, Hamed will uh, translate it in English. So if then you need the translation in French, you will have still uh, by the interpreters online. Please, Zara, the, the floor is yours. اول از همه سلام می کنم به تمامی کسانی که در این کنفرانس شرکت کردن مخصوصا و مخصوصا خواهران هموطنم خانم گیلانی خانم کاکر و ما بقیه دوستان دیگه First of all uh, thank you to, to be in, in the, to, to have been in, in, uh, involved in this, in, this, in this meeting and I would like to, to say hi at the beginning to my Afghan sisters, Senior Gilani and, and the other ladies there. In the name of all uh, brave and courageous women of Afghanistan. In Afghan culture, we have a tradition. زمانی که بین مردان خانواده و یا قوم و قبیله دعوا و مشاجره اتفاق می افتد when there is a conflict between men or between tribes زنان خانواده میانجی می شوند برای پایان دادن به مشاجره lots of time like the, the women of the family are doing the, the, the peacemaking و مردان خانواده را به چادر سرشان قسم می دهند and they use the hijab and they make a swear to men to, to stop the conflict. مردان به دلیل احترام و تقدسی که برای حجاب و چادر زنان قائل هستند جنگ را با این میانجگری خاتمه می‌دهند. And the men to, to respect that hijab and to respect uh, those ladies try that not lots of times trying to, to, to stop the conflict. این فرهنگ نشان می‌دهد که در جامعه افغانستان اگر به زنان در عرصه‌های مختلف جامعه میدان داده شود and this experience and uh, can tell us if Romans from Afghanistan could could have the opportunity uh, they could be a good peacemaker و فضای کافی و مناسب برایشان در جامعه بدهند and if they have opportunity to to have their own space in the society جدا از اینکه می توانند خودشان رشد کنند بلکه به رشد جامعه هم کمک خواهند کرد. They can grow up and not only that they will help the society to grow. در اجتماع کوچکتری مانند خانواده و خانه این مادر خانواده است که همیشه مدیریت فضای خانه را به دست می گیرد. In, in the smallest society that we know which is called family normally uh, a lady is like commanding. در بین اعضای خانواده صلح و آرامی و هماهنگی به وجود می آورد. And that's why that the small society has always peace. حالا اگر این زن یک زن تحصیل کرده و با سواد باشد وقتی وارد اجتماع بزرگتری به نام جامعه شود and if these, uh, these ladies uh, have the possibility to be to, to study to, to be uh, trained and when uh, she's entering to the bigger society which is called normal society و در عرصه‌های مختلف سیاسی، اجتماعی، اقتصادی و آموزشی فعالیت داشته باشد، می‌تواند صلح را در بین حلقه‌هایی که در آن فعالیت می‌کند هم ایجاد کند. 
uh, and if uh, they could have the opportunity to 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 have their own place even to the to the bigger society uh, for sure they could they could they could act very well تعداد این زنان هر چقدر بیشتر باشد ما بیشتر به ایدئال خودمان uh, obviously if we have more women with these opportunities we, uh, it's easier to reach to our ideals که همان صلح و مدیریت سالم خانواده و جامعه است نزدیک می‌شویم uh, the, the ideals uh, which are peace and and have the stability in the society زیرا که زنان در سراسر سر دنیا همیشه پیامآوران صلح و مدیریت سالم جامعه بودند because women uh, are in, in all around the world they have been all, they have been always like the the messenger the, the messengers of peace and also the 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 unstable uh, management of the society به نظرتون چرا دولت هایی که طالبان را حمایت و هدایت می کنند تمام تمرکزشان را گذاشتن بر روی اینکه زنان جامعه افغان از آموزش باز بمانند Uh, why all the uh, states who are supporting uh, Afghanistan are trying to 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 use Taliban to to uh, to don't cover uh, in a good way, like particularly the woman situation? اگر از لحاظ اسلامی و دینی بخواهند این حرف را مستند کنند نمی توانند. If they want, according to the religion and uh, and according to the traditions, if they want to 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 prove, uh, they they are they are they are not able. چرا که در دین ما تمام زنان ممتاز و الگوی ما زنانی هستند که آموزش دیده بودن. Because in Islam, in our religion, we have lots of uh, women who has been uh, as leader and all at the same time uh, educated. دختر پیامبر ما فاطمه در زمان جاهلیت نه تنها از بالاترین احترام از طرف پدرش برخوردار بود. Uh, our prophet's daughter Fatima uh, in in that period of uh, in that period of uh, um, she was very respected from her father and from 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 all the society. بلکه از بیشترین سواد و تحصیل در بین زنان تمام زنان آن زمان هم برخوردار بود. Uh, at the same time she was very educated and in a very high level of uh, studies in that, that period. پیامبر دین ما اسلام میگوید ز گهواره تا گور دانش بجو. Our prophet Muhammad is saying uh, you have to learn you have to study from at the beginning of being born till when you go to the town. این جمله است که در آن جنسیت مشخص نشده است. And in, in this sentence I don't see any kind of like gender. پس بنابر این دولت های پشت, بر... پشت پرده مانند پاکستان و وهابیسم عربستان. Uh, so I think like, uh, like the, 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 the other countries for example who are acting in my country for example Pakistan or, or like uh, Saudi Arabia with که طالبان را مانند عروسک های خیم شبازی به این سو و آن سو می برند و پلن های شوم خود را از طریق این مزدوران در افغانستان پیاده می کنند and normally uh, they they are uh, realizing their plans uh, to Taliban in my country نمیخواهند که زنان ما رشد کنند. They don't want our women to be grown up. زیرا که همه ما خوب میدانیم اگر بخوایم از ریشه همه چیز را اصلاح کنیم. Because uh, lots of uh, all of us we know if you want to have a change to, to, to make a change radically. قدم اول آموزش و آگاه سازی زنان از حقوق خودشان است. First step is like helping is um, um, helping women to uh, to to study and to to know their rights zira ke zanan parvarish dahande hastan because the 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 women are educating the others also va ba'is o bani parvarish ek nasl agah va roshan and they are the the root of a, a, a society a, a, 
a society uh, with uh, success and 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 bright. هنوز در افغانستان زنانی هستند که از تحصیلات عالی برخوردارند. Still we have in Afghanistan lots of women who are graduated, educated in a, in, a, in a high level. در دولت قبل طالبان شغل‌های خوبی داشتند و کاملا مستقل بودند. In the previous uh, government they had the good position. با ارگان‌های خارجی و داخلی معتبر کار کردند. They work deal and deal a lot with all lots of international uh, organizations. و جانشان از سوی طالبان در خطر است. And they are in Afghanistan at, at this moment at this moment they are under risk of Taliban. حتی اگر طالب آنها را نکشد بیکاری فقر و نداشتن فضای مناسب even if uh, nothing will be happen through Taliban to them but uh, being jobless and uh, and the losing the opportunities that they had before برای ادامه دادن به فعالیت های پیشینشان آنها را خواهد کشت uh, so that, that as they don't have the, those opportunities or those facilities before uh, somehow they are died again در واقع چیزی که اتفاق می افتد مرگ تدریجی آنان است and yeah and it's a, it's a way to 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 die uh, like it's it's a way to 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 die like slowly مرگ تدریجی رویاهایشان Uh, to die slowly uh, to, to die slowly of their hopes تدریجی توانمندی هایشان to die uh, slowly their uh, potentialities their, their forces مرگ تدریجی امید هایشان and uh, the, the, the die of their, their wish و مردم افغانستان در حال حاضر بدترین روزهای خود را سپری می کنند. Unfortunately, the, the Afghan people in this moment are uh, passing their, their worst period of the time. و در دولت طالبان بیشترین کسانی که متضرر هستند زنان افغانان. And, and in government, in Taliban's government, obviously ladies are Uh, the most discriminated category of the society. مخصوصا قشر تحصیل کرده زنان که هنوز هم آنجا وجود دارند. Particularly the one with high education. زنان افغان در این زمانه حساس امتحان خودشان را پس دادند. Afghan women uh, in this uh, in this situation uh, they they show their their uh, abilities. و با مبارزات و تظاهرات اخیر خودشان به تمام جهان نشان دادند که اگر فرصت رشد در اختیارشان قرار گیرد از آن فرصت سوء استفاده نمی کنند بلکه برای رشد و آگاهی خودشان نسبت به حقوقشان کمال استفاده را میبرند. But, uh, um, but in the opposite side they will they, they are uh, women are always using the, the, the opportunities in the best way. و حتی for themselves and, and, the, and for the society. و حتی حاضرن برای پس گرفتن حقوقشان رو در روی طالب ایستاده شوند. And uh, in, in this period yeah, they are even uh, able to stay face by face uh, against Taliban to to defend their rights. شاید این حرف من از نظر خیلی ها غیر ممکن و خوش خیالی محض باشد. Maybe uh, for some some people for some person uh, it's it's like a like not real desire. اما من فکر می کنم دوران حکومت داری مردان در افغانستان رو به اتمام است. But I think uh, like the period of uh, like a masculine government in Afghanistan is going to be finished. Afghan And at the same time, uh, men in Afghanistan they showed uh, several times that they are not able to 
to, to, to guarantee the, the society and the wellness of the society. و از فرصت هایی که در اختیارشان در این 20 ساله گذشته شد گذاشته شد متاسفانه سوء استفاده کردند. And they uh, in, even in, in the last 20 years um, men they were not able to, to achieve Uh, and to use the, the, the possibilities that they had, the opportunities they had for the society in a good way. نه برای منافع ملت افغانستان بلکه برای منافع شخصی خودشان. Most of them, they, they, were, not, uh, they were not taking care of um, like the profit for the society, but they were thinking always only on themselves. من فکر می کنم کاری که در حال حاضر جامعه جهانی و کشورهای قدرتمند جهان می توانند انجام دهند این است. I think the things like the, the, that the, the, the international community could do in Afghanistan are going to could be like this. که اولویت و تمرکز خود را برای آموزش و توانمندی زنان بگذارند. Uh, the priority uh, uh, must be Uh, focusing on the education and high education for women. چه کسانی که داخل ماندن و چه کسانی که در خارج از افغانستان می باشند. For whom are still in the country and even for the people from outside. من به شخص به کمک های مالی و قضایی مستقیم اعتقادی ندارم. Uh, I personally uh, don't believe to, to, uh, to like To, the, to a kind of direct aims to the people like giving food etc. زیرا که این مشکل را اساسی حل نمی کند و فقط باعث وابسته شدن و وابسته ماندن این افراد به این کمک ها می شود. Because uh, the direct uh, aims and helps uh, are, are not like it. it's, it's not a it's not a very uh, very deep help it's, it's not a very uh, sustainable uh, way of helping because it's uh, it, it, it makes a kind of uh, dependence to the to the others بلکه باید فرصت های شغلی فرصت های تحصیلی برایشان ایجاد شود but i think yeah we have to give them the opportunity to study give them the opportunity to 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 to, to learn the professions تا بتوانیم برای آینده افغانستان رهبرانی از جنس زن پرورش دهیم. Particularly to, to focus on a future, uh, on a future with, with, with ladies in the decision makers group. و این تلسم مرد سالاری را در این کشور بشکنیم. Because we have to break that masculinity in, in our government. و در نهایت صحبت هم با یک جمله خط می کنم. And at the end, uh, I finish my, my, my part with a sentence. اگر یک انسان را نجات دادی، در واقع یک دنیا را نجات دادی. If you save a person, you save the humanity. به امید روزی که رهبران آینده افغانستان رو از بین زنان افغان ببینی. Okay, I, I hope... to that day when we have a, 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 an Afghan leader a, as a woman. Very much, Zara, for sharing your insight and thank you much for the interpretation. And you were very uh, inspiring. Last but not least, I would now to turn uh, um, the floor to Wajija Niazi. And she, works for one of the uh, Italian NGO who Banja on Luz, who have been very active since I mean 20 years already in uh, in Afghanistan and they played uh, a vital role during the last months in evacuating a lot of uh, women who have been worked with them uh, in, in the past years uh, for the rights of uh, women so uh, she was a, she is the deputy director of the foundation Panja in Kabul and she's now here in Italy please the floor is yours thank you so much Uh, first, of, first of all, uh, thank you so much for giving me the time to talk. Whatever I say, the situation in Afghanistan or not, you all know that women, children are all in bad situation. My country is on fire. I am very sad how everything was destroyed. I do not even think in my dream, never image of this day. Many changes had taken place in our country during 20 years. 
everyone had found life, everyone was trying to lead a normal life. Women, children, everyone was trying to hope for a good life. Suddenly, everything was, everything was uh, destroyed, bad days come. Afghan women always have uh, been in a position where they have made a difference in our society. Teacher, doctor, entertainer, political journalist, uh, uh, to name a few. We work side by side. Uh, our brother, father, husband, this become more permanent in this last 20 years. Girls' education, beside on age, it's a, a situation that has been a part of the culture. In most valleys, there aren't school for kids, no just girls, but in the past 20 years, it will getting better right now. Taliban will allow the all Afghan children to be educated. At this time, it's not hard to have a final uh, response on this. Uh, signal, uh, single generation education is also common in past uh, most uh, countries around the world, especially in the Muslim countries. Young age, uh, forced marriage is also a common uh, culture issue. Uh, it was able, I was able and allowed by my family to be educated and work in the field of human, human rights and uh, women rights. Uh, any country stands out if the so, so, so society is on side by well. Of Allah, we have right as a woman and a man in order to create a successful society. Education is the key of success. My opinion is that uh, when Allah gave this right, who Taliban does not allow us to educate? Right now, they are not allowing us after age of uh, 12 to go to the school, unfortunately. And the uh, violence is the home. It's not just an Afghan family issue or Taliban issue, it exists. In second world or third world uh, countries, uh, this issue has to be addressed uh, as a grassroots, family by family, village by village, country by country. Asian uh, education is the basis for uh, everything. Allah tell us to learn uh, as long as you are able to so I hope my uh, fellow uh, fellow Afghan uh, women and children ha have the opportunity for better life uh, away from war violence and destruction I am blessed and grateful to have been able to come uh, to this country but my heart cries to Afghanistan, to our nation, very difficult to see our country is in a far. Very uh, bad situation. There is no hope to leave at the moment. I get lots of message. We don't have hope to be a normal uh, life. Girls did not have right, uh, no education, no work. Uh, they can't continue like this. Because without the education, we can't continue. We are not burning only for the eating, drinking, and sleeping. Uh, we need education uh, to be a success. And uh, uh, also a big problem in nowadays is the uh, country is suffering to economy. Is running out of zero. This is a big problem. If it like this continue, I'm sure that it's a big, you know, dangerous uh, thing, uh, and they will die. I'm sure. And we need peace. We need freedom. We and now we don't have. Uh, unfortunately, I believe if uh, I believe if they will not uh, give us this chance to. Um, educate or to allow us, I'm sure, because, you know, many messages coming every day for, for me from different uh, places, different provinces of Afghanistan that we are fighting, we are dying, but we are not stopping. So I just hope that one day I will see again my country because, you know, it's still 
I'm in pain, honestly. Uh, even almost uh, two and a half months that my heart is crying. Every day, every day, by the time I'm seeing the news, by the time I'm receiving calls, messaging, this made me even, you know, mad. That how, how, you know, we are also like you people, normal. We are human and we need these things that you all needed. So how we lost everything suddenly. So this is for me very painful. I'm sorry. You don't have to be sorry. I thank you for sharing. And we cannot really know how, what, how you are feeling. I mean, if it's not through your words and uh, this, is, uh, this is a pain for us in a different way, but as well. So thank you for sharing uh, your experience, your concern for your country and your hopes that things will be better. And really, thank you for being with us and for speaking out about uh, how you are feeling. I think it's very important to all of us when we talk about policies and instruments, organization to really connect with the ground and with real life of people. So I think this is a very precious uh, um, moment that you are sharing with us. So thank you again. Thank you. Um, I know we are running out of time, but uh, we, I think we all agree that it was, uh, I didn't want to interrupt this uh, uh, sharing of experience. This was the space and the time for uh, our Afghan sisters to, to talk and to inform us and then to provide a information to see how we can then develop our uh, action in the future. I will now, um, this panel is concluded and I will now uh, give the floor to my colleague, uh, uh, Loredana Teodorescu, who is the uh, coordinator of the Secretariat of the Global uh, Alliance and also the Secretary General of WISE Italy. And uh, she will introduce the next panel. I know that we have a concern uh, of time because of the interpreters as well, so we cannot uh, uh, run too late. And um, so uh, the floor is and I really rely on your capacity of uh, going to the point and share the main message. Thank you. Thank you very much, Irene. Thank you very much, all. I'm deeply touched by your words, so it's not easy now to go on with, with our discussion. Uh, but I think that it's really now time to give the floor to our women mediators and women mediators network. Uh, you know that over the past six uh, years, a number of regional women mediators networks have been launched in different regions across the globe. And the aim and the objective, the objective is really to support a full and meaningful participation of women uh, in peace and mediation, mediation, mediation process. Uh, then in 2019, um, a global alliance of regional women mediator networks was launched. And this was really uh, an important and historic uh, moment, an historic opportunity uh, to create uh, an inclusive space to connect, uh, to facilitate the experience sharing between regional networks, and also to amplify uh, women's common aspiration and commitment to lead or at least to participate in peace processes. Now we are here, the word uh, since then has been changing uh, in terms of security, in terms of challenges. Uh, we are all uh, looking at the developments in Afghanistan and particularly the devastating situation of Afghan uh, women and girls, uh, which are of particular concerns. And this is why uh, we really want to uh, address some questions to ourselves and discuss uh, the role of women mediators and uh, of the networks and their collective uh, voice and action. So what is really the role of women mediators and peace builders on current security challenges in Afghanistan, how they can play a crucial role uh, to contributing to a much needed change, how they can make a difference and how we can all support their work, how can stakeholders and political forces can support their work. So I'd like to discuss this directly. Uh, with the representatives of the six regional women mediators networks of the Global Alliance uh, who are here with us. Thank you so much for being with us. And without further ado, uh, I would like to start with a member of the Mediterranean Women Mediators Network, uh, which is an initiative launched by the Italian Ministry of Foreign Affairs and implemented together with YAI and Wise Italy. Uh, together with us today, we have uh, Anna Cervi, 
Anna is the Norwegian Refugee Council Country Director in Syria, uh, but she has over 12 years experience with international NGOs in Syria, Pakistan, and also Afghanistan. So Anna, I would really like to, uh, you to give us your perspective, also based on your experience on the ground and your experience with the networks. Anna, thank you so much. The floor is yours. Thanks ever so much, uh, Loredan, and I would like to apologize with everyone for not having the video on, um, as my connection is not the greatest. Um, excellencies, members of uh, the parliament, uh, colleagues uh, that joined uh, this call today, I'd like to, uh, to make this intervention for all of those that actually they st stayed uh, in Afghanistan, for all of those that left leaving behind as we heard, as we heard uh, beloved one and pieces of their history and for all of those that uh, left and would like to go back and rebuild their own countries um, as a person that has been hosted uh, for years uh, in uh, in afghanistan i owe, owe to the country and its people a lot i owe, i owe particularly to women of afghanistan a lot of the professional i became and um, I would like to, uh, to share something that humbled me uh, from a colleague, a female colleague in Afghanistan back then, uh, that came to me and asked, how many years of war have you lived in your life? And as an Italian national, I said, none. And uh, she replied saying, I have not lived one day of peace in my life. So imagine the strength of the message. And I'd like to build also on the messages shared by Asila, by Fatima, Zahra, and Karamama, and uh, also Wajiha, um, that clearly shared with us uh, the failure of expectations, really, on, on the support and change that was meant to happen in positive in Afghanistan. But also, the energy and, uh, and moral that came from, from the support internationally after uh, the transitions and after the recent changes to the Afghan women and in support of Afghan women. But also the strong message that it is not, it is not over, it is not finished. There is still much more that needs to be done. And here is one example through this event, um, which uh, we hope will also be followed by others. Now, um, another colleague of mine, after what has happened, uh, said that female season in Afghanistan for the moment is over. And um, she has been an activist. She has been a person that uh, has stood up and actually led change at community level for years and years, actually two decades. And like her, there are so many other women out there that actually have done the same, have exposed themselves, and thanks to having fought for their education, for carving out a public space in their communities, societies, in their cities, they have managed over the last 20 years to advance the agenda of women equality in Afghanistan. But as we all know, we shouldn't uh, mistake the problem as being a problem of rural areas versus urban areas or as it being confined only in some parts of the country, the last uh, 20 years still retain legacy from pre-2001 and particularly when it came to fear, as a um, colleague Matt, um, said in an earlier intervention. After the international community having supported the Afghan women for all these, uh, for all these years in actually upholding uh, the rights for fellow other women and for fighting to have that space for education, that space for working, that space for political space and negotiations. What are we now to do looking forward? As we heard very clearly, it is not finished. And here from the Mediterranean Women Mediation Network, there are some reflections and suggestions um, looking ahead for the future. So there is an overarching problem of uh, legitimization of uh, the current government. And therefore, the, uh, the mediation networks should work in order to amplify all those voices uh, that will flag all reports showing evidence of policy changes against uh, human rights or violations of human rights on the ground. And this is an overarching issue whereby mediation networks, as some were saying, particularly the ones closer to Afghanistan, 
needed to actually intervene on and support all those voices. Now, there are also two, uh, two other considerations. The first is that those that have stood up, those women that have actually led for the last years in Afghanistan and that state need to be, continue to be supported in the capacity they have and in the space they have and in a safe manner. And that is a, a challenge. However, the international community has a responsibility to hear directly from them what is needed to be done and how it is needed. The women in Afghanistan know exactly how to navigate the landscape in front of them, but what they don't might not have are opportunities. So women mediation networks can be the best conduit among others to actually pragmatically see what is needed and what can be done. Second is also to ensure that in diplomatic delegations, in Western delegations, there is a presence of women that can actually engage with other women, particularly when visiting the country. And let's remember that male colleagues might not have even access to speak to Afghan women once in Afghanistan. This is not sufficient, of course, and uh, there should be also delegations composed by people that are speaking the language, understanding the culture, and this will actually support getting the points right. All of this for pushing the agenda of having an inclusive dialogue process with the government and beyond and reach a more sustainable stability in the country that is now far from, from reach. On the other hand, and this is more looking at the broader context and all, for all those women that actually to date still do not have a voice, do not have, have not been able to stand up for their own rights because of the context in which they are in. And so women mediation networks should support in ensuring that aid to the country will be conditional on the respect of human rights inside the country. And that those considerations will remain at the forefront and that in the choices will be made in consultation with women in the country. The second uh, initiatives that will be uh, incredibly important are going to be on gender equality uh, initiatives that will need to aim to promote that space that now has been put at risk by the recent changes. Um, traditionally, there has been a lot of support given at the uh, micro level in the country, and uh, particularly for initiatives led by women in their own context, that these need to be protected too. These cannot disappear due to the instability of the country. And thanks to the work of many, uh, remain an, a possibility uh, and an option for all the women that stayed in the country. Uh, other initiatives that would greatly help uh, would be, for example, to ask uh, uh, for a fact-finding mission of UNESCO and thoroughly assess the education situation in the country and based on the findings, further advocate on behalf of those that do not have yet or will not have the right to education in Afghanistan moving forward. And lastly, um, we, uh, in, we would suggest also to consider for the UN Trust Fund whose anniversary, 25th anniversary is this year, to consider stepping up funding into Afghanistan in support of, uh, uh, of Afghan women. I would like to conclude um, because uh, this, uh, this situation will not and cannot just be uh, resolved by um, not involving male counterparts that could become enabler for increase the space for Afghan women in their own country. Men need to be included in initiatives and become sponsor of gender equality, of respect of human rights and policies that will not go against equal uh, opportunities for everyone inside the country. And how to do that is a dialogue that women mediation networks can help and support in the moving forward in these discussions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Anna, for uh, sharing with us your own perspective, but also uh, trying to look ahead, highlighting the role uh, the networks can play and sharing with us some specific recommendation. Also highlighting the fact that we are here also to let uh, Afghan women voices being heard. And this is what 
uh, we, we've just done. So thank you very much. And now I will turn to Ambassador Farika Shwaki, um, member of the Arab Women Mediators Network. Uh, ambassador Farika is currently ambassador of Iraq uh, in Bern, and she's a peace mediator in the Women and Childhood Committee of the League of Arab States. Ambassador, the floor is yours. Uh, Your Excellencies, uh, nice to be with you today on behalf of the Network of Arab Women Peace Mediators. I would like to thank all the organizers of this uh, important uh, event uh, related to the status of women. Uh, and I actually, I, they asked me to focus on the uh, resolution, Security Council resolution of 1325 and uh, then uh, focus on the, uh, the, the situation of uh, Afghan women. And now I will focus on the, uh, uh, the resolution. Uh, but first of all, I would like to say in most of the wars that took place in the world, women did not participate in their decisions, yet they paid the price of all the historical war in the world many of examples there, how they, they uh, legislate laws, violent women's rights. Yeah, after Security Council Resolution 1325 in 2000, member states, uh, uh, regional organization and United Nations revealed effort to uh, accelerate uh, results that demonstrate uh, the transformative implementation of the women, peace and security agenda. Uh, the uh, subsequent result, uh, resolution, which uh, resulted for resolution 1325, aimed at strengthening the rule of international networks in the peaceful settlement of uh, disputes and the prevention and resolution of disputes. The decision-making body has expressed the need for mediation to integrate the women's agenda 1325 through policies. The commitment of the United Nations and its member states to promote women's rights and integrate them into peace process, as well as to involve them in peace negotiation by ensuring that gender equality issue struggle in all stages of the peace process, as well as finding mechanism to facilitate greater uh, involvement of women at all level with the effort of all international networks that were established since 2015. Among international groups include the Network of Arab Women Peace Mediators and Peacemaking, Peace Building and Post-Conflict Recon Reconciliation. Obstacle persists regard uh, active women uh, participation in peace process and mediation process and the uh, opportunities uh, available in a mediation process and the opportunities to overcome them. The most important of which are the challenges related to political will and the link uh, between the low representation of women in politics and paving the way for their participation in the peace process and the balance between women representation and the promotion of the gender equality and the obstacle that prevent participation, sustainable civil society and how to protect human rights from sexual violence and discrimination and respect the rights of civilian population, refugees, and internally uh, displaced person and avoiding amnesty for crimes uh, commit, committed in the war against women. There is an established facts, fact, uh, which is the issue of democracy and the issue of women and youth is an issue of very sensitive issue. It could not, it cannot resist the unstable situation. That is when there is instability and an uncontrolled stability on the streets. All democratic issues are backwards in the issue of women that uh, the, they prosper in shadow of peace and stability. And that is happened now in the Afghan, Afghan and what happened with the uh, Afghanist women. 
Although the most important international organization have condemned the war uh, and warned Taliban against its uh, treatment of women in Afghanistan, although the Taliban have stated that they will change their uh, treatment of women, but there is no uh, grant, uh, granted uh, of the uh, credibility of their statement because every time they talk with the name of the God and they say that is halal and that is haram, that is goodness and that is badness. The, here comes the role of the international community to pressure the uh, Taliban government for respecting the role of the human rights and women rights. There, the fact that the economic situation of the Taliban government is very bad and it needs an international support, which is supposed to be conditioned on human rights standards and the participation of women in all, all fields. And the, I don't know, uh, uh, I'm sorry for people, but that is the fact. The civil society in, in Afghanistan should also be effective with the help of international organization because there is an, an is a question uh, that raises what to do in the face of this situation and the answer to this is civil uh, action by all groups demanding women's rights and as you know that Afghan women are steadfast and active women and we hope uh, uh, that uh, re really I am not optimistic so much but I, I feel they could may make a, a great job and they would with the, uh, actually with the support and the eye of international community and uh, I hope all the best for uh, the organizers of this nice panel and for the women uh, Afghanis women to have uh, to improve their uh, life and their situation thank you very much thank you thank you thank you very much ambassador uh, for um, focusing on the 1325 resolution um, we are celebrating in these days uh, the anniversary of the resolution and this of course give us an opportunity to reflect also on the future on, of the women peace and security agenda being aware of the current challenges uh, which are still related to the low participation of women and the lack of political will as you highlighted very very well and now i will um, I will turn to uh, Shadia Marhaban, uh, international mediator. Uh, Shadia is a member of Mediators Beyond Borders and is also a member of the steering committee of the Southeast Asia Network of Women, Peace, Negotiators and Mediators, which was established uh, in 2019, initiated by Indonesia and recently joined the Global Alliance. Uh, Shadia, based on your extensive experience, uh, what is your take on this? Yes, uh, good afternoon and good evening here from Indonesia. Uh, Excellencies, Ambassador, Member of Parliament, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for Wise Italy and Global Alliance Network for organizing this event. As we all hear from the previous speakers about how to engage with the current situation in Afghanistan, we all agree how important girls and women education. But above all, let's not forget to give hope for people of Afghanistan. The Southeast Asia Network of Women Peace Negotiators and Mediators found the opportunity to engage in Afghanistan is challenging, unique, but not impossible. The Southeast Asia Network was championed by the Republic of Indonesia through the Office of Ministry of Foreign Affairs, being the largest Muslim populated country in the world Indonesia is a democratic country and there is something to contribute to the situation in, in Afghanistan today. Political transition is always a challenge and we know how difficult the situation in Afghanistan, especially for women and girls. I think we have to use a different strategy and templates to deal with the current government. We cannot use the same templates, the same strategy like before. We have to see this not as a challenge, but also as an opportunity. There are three points we would like to highlight here. Our network will help focus 
in bridging Afghanistan to develop by synergizing with Islamic development agencies, women Islamic business and development agencies in countries such as Indonesia, Malaysia, and Brunei Darussalam. Second, normalizing the situation through exchanges, men and women to various institutions, religious scholars exchanges, student exchanges, and humanitarian work exchanges. Why we see this is important because the learning from other Muslim country could gain a lot of understanding uh, because we, we will be talking the same language. The third is bridging development and Islamic values. The core will be ethic, Islamic development and governance. I think there are so much reference in, uh, to, in my country, in Indonesia, with regards to Islam, democracy, development and governance. So there is a lot to learn uh, and also there's a lot to share. Uh, so if this opportunity uh, given, I think the network can focus more. And at the same time, if the development is running, the situation for women economically will change. The second will be the mutual cooperation and also solidarity, coordination with many Islamic Chamber of Commerce and Women Entrepreneurs Association in Southeast Asia. Our focus, not only about women education, but also about economic growth, development, Islamic education and peace building. Education is important. Families also need to bring food to the table to give security to the family, justice and dignity above all for the people of Afghanistan. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you very much, Shadia, uh, for um, highlighting that this, this is not only a challenge, but also an opportunity to rethink our approach. And also for reminding us that uh, it's crucial to give hope to the Afghan people and the Afghan women. And we hope we are doing so also today uh, with our uh, reflection, our inspiring words, your inspiring words, uh, our energy. And now uh, I will turn to uh, Ambassador Pia uh, Stiernwall. Uh, she is the Finnish ambassador in Kosovo. Uh, she is a member of the Nordic Women Mediators, uh, which is a network of women from, from the five Nordic countries, Denmark, Finland, Iceland, Norway, and Sweden. Uh, the ambassador uh, Stilwell also had an important experience on the ground in Afghanistan uh, because she was deputy and then head of the mission of EUPOL Afghanistan, European Union Police Mission uh, there from 2014 until 2016. So ambassador, um, can you tell us a little bit more uh, about your experience and can you give us really your insight, your perspective based on your experience on the ground? Thank you, the floor is yours. Oh, well, thank you very much. It's very nice to be with you all here. Um, I'm, I'm a, a, a bit confused by myself because actually um, it's, it's so nice to, to hear from Fatima. It's so nice to hear from Asila with whom, actually with whom Asila we started to do 1325 in, 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 in Afghanistan. It took six months, you know, six years, but it was still, I think worthwhile, hopefully we can save some of it. But if I think what we can do as, as uh, Nordic Media as a network, and we have already done a, a, a bit of, of supporting Afghan negotiators in different kind of uh, issues, for example, uh, mediation and, and uh, no, so I, I forget the word for, uh, if you want to, to to stop the war, you have to have a negotiation voice, so you can you, you know what I mean. But somehow I forgot the word. So what I think, um, what I honestly think, I think the area at, at the moment in Afghanistan is very challenging. It's it's very hard to go there, and it's very hard to to do the work there, and it's very sc scary because we of course don't want to hurt any people, and and if they known to be working with us, they probably can be hurt, and that's why we have to be very cautious. Secondly, I think uh, we, there is a lot of Afghan ladies who are now out, outside, especially in US and, and uh, Europe, 
that we could actually connect to and, and find a way what we can do together. Because I think that is something that we could push. And I think we also have a responsibility, not only speaking about girls or ladies or women, I think uh, is, you know, for a boy to be in, in Afghanistan, it's not also e easy. So even though we are women mediators, we also take care of, of boys. And I think, I'm, I'm very precise because I think we don't have too much time. And I think we should use uh, um, uh, religious leaders because at least I know that Finland have a lot of connections with the religious leaders and maybe getting some of the religious leaders to speak about, uh, and that's, I, I'm sorry, I, I don't want to hurt anyone or say badly, but I, I, I for me, I, 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 I <laughs> I spoke earlier with with who uh, with the person who makes these fatwas or kind of how you have to to behave uh, in in Islam way, and I think some of these people would be very good to to discuss with Taliban, to have a discussion what we understand what we not understand and how to go forward with with the because I think they were also Taliban was also like surprised that they got so fast to the power so we I, I think we we could kind of find a ways to to have an negotiation have a better policies have a better understanding and and uh, even having uh, you know not not the secular country but a country for islam but having country which which uh, is fair and good and proper and then um i think uh there's a lot of, at least my friends still in, in Afghanistan that are afraid of their lives. So if we can do something to, to have them a visa for nearby countries that they could actually get out, I think that would be good. It is very sad. I know it's, it's not good to have your own people and especially people who are very well educated to leave. However, if they feel that they're scared and they, they can't live in the countries, then I think um, we should help them and uh, um, I really uh, appreciated the discussion here today and I appreciated that we were speaking like quite honestly and I want to thank everyone for that and uh, uh, and I think what was discussed before is, is uh, uh, about human rights for Finland human rights is, is extremely important and um, and uh, I, I would like us to talk about it more, how we can to make sure that everyone can be feeling can be feeling safe and secure at their home. And uh, I just want to say that from uh, Nordic Mediation, Nordic Women Mediators uh, Network, we will have a we will have a meeting um, in uh, I think it starts 16 of November, if I'm correct. And then we are speaking about Afghanistan again. So hopefully there is something that we can also feed to this network that we can uh, get good ideas how to go forward because it's extremely important that we don't leave Afghanistan alone now. And uh, uh, we try to do our best. And, uh, and from my, this is not properly my government's uh, opinion, but for me, uh, only reason, only no, only way to go forward is that we have a extensive negotiation with Taliban, because they they seem to be have a support from uh, people, and we have to be able to make them to have a, a proper government. Even uh, yeah, I think we need to help them to make a proper government, and um, yeah, and uh, Fatima, Asila. Everyone, there, beautiful ladies. I'm so happy to see you and happy to to discuss with you. And um, I hope we will meet in Afghanistan one of these days. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Indeed, we are all struggling to understand what we can do, and I'm sure we will continue this reflection also in the next uh, few weeks all together. Uh, and now I will turn to the Women Mediators Across the Commonwealth, uh, which is a network uh, counting uh, uh, 49 members from 22 countries. 
And today we have the pleasure to have with us uh, Mossarat Kadem, co-founder of Paiman Alumni Trust, which is a pioneer organization in preventing and countering violent extremism in Pakistan. We heard before how um, neighboring countries uh, are playing a crucial role uh, like Pakistan. And so it's really a pleasure for us to have you uh, here and to also hear your perspective and your insight. Thank you very much. The floor is yours. Uh, thank you. Uh, good morning, uh, good afternoon, and of course, good evening and assalamu alaikum. Uh, when I saw this um, topic, a feminist uh, vision for the future of Afghanistan, what role for regional women mediators network, I was really um, happy because I thought that someone is seriously thinking of the women of Afghanistan. Now, I um, would like to actually speak on um, two issues. One, how women mediators across the Commonwealth um, try to help um, or, or like, you know, influence the, the, the talk process uh, when that was supposed to be held in Istanbul in April. So we came up, we established a task force within the women mediators across the Commonwealth. Uh, that was in April, 2021. Uh, these were the women who had varied experiences and expertise. Exp expertise from inclusive process design to knowing the language, knowledge of the culture, the religious sensitivities, and of course, some of them belong to the to the region, and uh, and few belong to the other regions. So it was just like you know, uh, coming together of the women mediator networks having different experiences. We planned to be in Istanbul during the Taliban Afghan government talks, but the talks could not took place. So after the Taliban took over in August, most of us in the task force started receiving different types of requests. These requests were. From the, from the women in Afghanistan, from the network that we have been engaged with for, for decades now. And in our own capacity, we tried our level best to facilitate uh, visas for some of them, provide tickets, evacuate them to other countries and help them in their settlements. And even till this date, we are trying to actually help them uh, in, 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 in getting the visas of different countries and of course safe, a safe passage via Pakistan to, to other countries. So that's what we have been doing. But this is this was not a simple, simple task. It was so difficult. It was so hard because first, we as mediators have no have no recognition at all that yes, we exist and we can actually prevail upon the processes because our own government would not listen to us. So that was actually our first hurdle. The, the the we tried our level best of course like you know, to help and support our afghan women um, who were in need of of support at that time and we are still like you know trying to help and support them that's one thing that we 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 did and we definitely would like to continue with that support and i'm going to give you some recommendations as well but before i give you the recommendations on behalf of the women mediators across the commonwealth um, I just would like to um, emphasize on two points. And Ms. Fatima Gilani just said that they learn how to speak to men who, who don't think like, like women or who don't think like you know, most of, of, the, of, the, of the women. This is so important to understand the psyche and the mindset of the new leaders of Afghanistan. And that is why we need to speak to them in a cultural and religious sensitive way. And I really appreciate the words of Ms. Pia's comment, uh, her comments, that we really, uh, they are there. They are not going anywhere. The new leaders of Afghanistan are there. It's a, so whether we like it or not, we have to actually you know, help them in establishing a government which is more inclusive. How that can be done? I think we really need to speak to these people. And speaking from my own experience, I would just say that the Taliban, they are, they, they, they are human beings. They need to speak to, but they need to actually, they, they want to hear what uh, they, their own sort of like, you know, thinking. They want to, to hear uh, their own um, sort of a strategy. But we really need to actually convince them that, that their strategy is not what the rest of the world wants 
uh, from our, that's not the strategy of the rest of the world. For that, we really need to actually um, develop a whole a whole process of engaging them. And I have a few recommendations. So on behalf of my women mediators um, across the Commonwealth Network, I have few recommendations. And one of them is that we all, I think, not only like you know one 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 network, but the Global Alliance Network of Women Mediators should develop one coherent strategy to coordinate efforts and flag issues faced by women in Afghanistan, including security, protection, and participation, uh, so that the process is, we keep the process on track. For this, we, as a team, should have continuity over time. First, I think, and I second, I think one of uh, the earlier speaker also said, uh, flagged this issue, that we need to carry out a fact-finding mission to develop the common analysis necessary to underpin coordinated action, which is inclusive and all-encompassing. I also would suggest a structured process dedicated to a co-chair co structure composed of the Global Mediators Alliance and maybe one or UN mediators, uh, I mean, like, you know, entity as well, with a flexible format so the modicum of um, dialogue can be maintained with the Taliban on women-focused humanitarian secu sec security and participation, et cetera, um, issues. For this, we need the support of the group of international actors. And we should have consultation and coordination at the highest level with the influential states to ensure that the leverage of those states as well as of the international institutions in which they have weight, like World Bank, NATO, European Union, et cetera, is brought to, to bear. So once the structure is in place, then a clear distribution of roles is needed to ensure that the political leverage of the mediation and uh, I mean, our mediation uh, group is appropriately backed up by the required uh, financial resources, um, some guarantees that could be uh, that could be security guarantee, and of course, technical knowledge by pro should be provided by other actors. But on top of all this, cultural sensitivities and of course, language are also to be considered. Finally, I think Islamic scholars and Muslim women peace builders from the different uh, networks can actually should form a network, especially from the region, should develop a narrative based on an Islamic system of governance, women role in state and society, so that we can like, you know, convince the other party that there is a need for including women uh, in, in this whole process at different levels. Uh, that's what my message would be. And, the own, and, and my final message would be that I think we all need to work that we as women mediators must be recognized first and accept, accepted by all as women who can influence the political institutions, the processes, and of course, the values. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mosara, um, for highlighting that indeed uh, women mediators exist. They can make a difference contributing to change the mindset and also developing a different narrative. Um, and now um, the last speaker was supposed to be Gloria Cabbage, currently a deployment officer for the FemWise Africa Network. Unfortunately, she's experiencing some uh, uh, technical problems with her internet connection, so she won't be able to, uh, to take the floor. Uh, so I would like to conclude here our panel discussion and to thank you for your inspiring words and um, particularly for the work you are all doing. I think that there are no more excuses for women's exclusion. And today we heard many women ready to play their role and also to contribute to a positive change. Uh, let's make it happen. Uh, let's give to the Afghan women and to the Afghan people their future back. Thank you very much. And now I have the pleasure uh, to give back the floor to Miss Irene Fellin. Uh, President of Waisitari for her final remarks. Thank you very much, Loredana, and thank you all our, my friends and sisters from the different networks. It was very inspiring as uh, usual to listen to you to, uh, about what you have been doing in the past months, but also about uh, the suggestion and the recommendation on how we can move this agenda forward on behalf of the Global Alliance. Uh, before concluding, I would just a, a reminder, a few important aspects that have emerged during this discussion. 
uh, about the importance of keep the momentum. I think we all agree uh, on this. Uh, we don't have to uh, stop talking about uh, what is happening in Afghanistan, even if maybe the, the media coverage and the news that we are receiving are partial. Um, we know that uh, it's important that we keep the door open and the, the communication flow, and we will uh, ensure that uh, on, our, on our side that uh, we will be in contact with women there, so our women who are in Italy and still in collaboration and in contact with the, their sister in the, in the country. It's important to be grounded. It's important that we really uh, work and listen uh, in the same way we did today, but we continue doing this and uh, rely on our networks to do so. Uh, it's important that uh, we also expand and include our personal networks in, uh, in the Global Alliance and in our respective Women Mediators Network. And uh, as it was stated, to use the leverage on uh, political women who are in the, country, in the neighboring countries or are in the countries who are providing support to Afghan women and uh, to reinforce our respective uh, um, networks and actions on, uh, on the ground. I think that uh, two other main aspects were uh, stressed by all speakers, the importance of looking at the crisis in an holistic way. The, the humanitarian crisis is not, a, and the gender dimension of it is not the, the only uh, tragedy, but the food crisis and the economic impact on the, on the country are extremely uh, relevant and it's important that we address and look at the, the solutions and, and the future of the uh, of the country, tackling all the, the dimensions that uh, have uh, emerged because we cannot only focus on one without considering the, the trickle down effect that is uh, the political crisis had on all other dimension and bearing in mind that every aspect have a gender perspective so it's not only a question of looking at women at the participation of women but of the consequences that every uh, social life aspect I will have on women and, uh, and girls and the other I think key aspect is uh, um, the, the role of uh, Islam and the positive uh, narrative that uh, uh, few other countries some other countries can uh, uh, provide uh, uh, to uh, engage in the dialogue, to share experience. Uh, and uh, uh, I think that coming from the network recommendation, this was also shared how it will be important to share experience in this uh, uh, regard in the coming months and to see how uh, the dialogue can be open uh, also in the respect of uh, Islamic uh, uh, tradition and to uh, present the, the positive uh, roles also of uh, women in politics in other uh, successful uh, contexts. And i like to conclude uh, about the uh, communication and the dialogue and the fact that uh, it was stressed that uh, international support is uh, essential uh, from other uh, countries, from international organizations, and uh, uh, the pressure from outside needs to remain, but the dialogue has to come from uh, uh, within the country. Women started this conversation a long time ago. This was uh, uh, reopening a different ways in Doha as it was recalled. And now it's time to uh, continue this conversation. So we are here just to uh, support you and uh, to uh, be just uh, sisters and uh, to network to feel that to make uh, we act familiar and feel that they are not alone in the room where they are physically alone, but they are not uh, emotionally and then will never be. Uh, psychologically and uh, isolated. We are all here uh, to support each other. Uh, thank you again for being with us. Uh, thank you for your insights and the sh experience sharing. We will collect all the valuable inputs uh, that were uh, shared today. And uh, as it was suggested by Mosrat at the end, uh, I think that the idea of really create a strategic task force within the Global Alliance, it's a very good uh, uh, suggestion. And I think we will move uh, forward in this, uh, starting from this uh, uh, suggestion. Thank you again and uh, enjoy the rest of your day.